Welcome everyone to our webinar this evening on taking the mystery out of a company retirement plan, including the impact on the current of the current financial market presented by Andrew Denuncio, investment officer and manager of the 401k program at First Financial Trust, a subsidiary of the Savings Bank. Andrew has served in various positions in the wealth management and investment services industry and prior to joining First Financial Trust, managed a 401k department where he direct worked directly with business owners to help find the best invest uh, investment solutions for their employees. So let's begin. Andrew, the floor is yours. Thank you, Karen. Um, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining me tonight. As Karen mentioned, my name is Andrew Denuccio. I'm an investment officer at First Financial Trust and manage the 401k investment management department. So tonight's discussion will be focused on how a 401k investment manager can help you properly establish and maintain an employee retirement plan suitable specifically for your company. Some of the key items I will discuss include the benefits of offering a retirement plan, how an investment manager takes on fiduciary responsibility to select, manage, and monitor the investment offerings within the plan, and how we take a unique hands-on approach at First Financial Trust to offer these services to local businesses. Before we get into the importance of using a fiduciary investment manager for your plan, I'll give a quick market overview and I'll look for 2022. As of today's market close, the S&P is up 24.83% year to date. We have seen moments in the market where there have been slight pullbacks, but those have been short lived so far. There has been sector rotation in the stock market throughout this year with a shift from growth oriented securities to more value oriented securities. When the pandemic struck in 2020, the stock market had a deep correction that bottomed in March. However, this was short lived as we saw the quickest bull market rally in history. You can see on the uh, slide um, that will be presented that it took only 354 trading days for the S&P to bottom to double from its bottom. On average, this will typically take over a thousand days to happen. Many of the technology companies that help millions of people stay connected and made staying home easier saw large and swift gains throughout the last year, year and a half. Since the beginning of this year, that narrative has started to shift as investors have been focused more on value based securities with commodities, financials and real estate being the best performing sectors thus far. Energy has been a major contributing factor to the outperformance of commodities. WTI crude oil is currently trading around $80 a barrel and natural gas is trading around $5. This coincides with the frequent discussion of inflation and the debate of it being transitory or not. Just last week, we saw CPI inflation come in at 6.2% annually for October, which is the steepest climb since 1990. Prices have been increasing in all aspects of life, whether it be automobiles, the grocery store, or energy prices. This sticker shock can be attributed to prolonged supply and demand imbalances, soaring wages, and rising rent amid the housing boom. We do expect inflation to continue to be a major factor going into next year, with core consumer prices remaining in the mid 5% range for most of the winter. This will play a significant role in the Federal Reserve's fiscal policy as they continue to taper their quantitative easing program. We could expect to see several rate hikes beginning as soon as next year, however. One of the more important government yields to watch is the 10 year yield because it is seen as a sign of of investor sentiment about the economy. It's currently trading around 1.58% um, and it started the year at only 0.9%. Although it has risen quite a bit this year, it is still historically very low. And as of recently, it's been trading in a tight uh, range. So it really hasn't been moving too much um, in the past couple months. It's kind of been bouncing around the 150, 160 range, um, but it has had a large movement at the beginning of the year. As we head into 2022, we'll closely gauge the Federal Reserve's policy stance and continuously monitor how many interest rate hikes we will get and when we'll expect to get them. We do expect to see slower growth in the markets in 2022 with returns in the single mid digit range. Supply chain issues and labor shortages that came about from the pandemic 
will continue to adversely affect the economy. This Tuesday, um, Walmart reported their third quarter earnings, and we saw how labor shortages and supply chain constraints are affecting even the biggest retailers. Having to increase wages and hand out bonuses to attract employees impacted their bottom line. The supply constraints were evident as third quarter gross margins declined 42 basis points. Businesses have had to, businesses have been forced to get creative to combat these issues. In Walmart's case, they began chartering its own vessels to ship goods, ordering products into the US well ahead of time and rerouted deliveries to less crowded ports. With all of this being said, one of the biggest topics not just in the financial markets, but obviously in the global economy is coronavirus. We have seen significant developments with coronavirus, specifically with Merck's new COVID-19 pill. In fact, Dr. Gottlieb said that 90% of US residents will have some form of immunity uh, protection against COVID by January. At First Financial Trust, we do expect this to play a strong role in the reopening trade next year which will continue to shift favor to value securities over high priced multiple growth securities. In addition, the Federal Reserve's reduction in bond buying and the economy beginning to pick up, we do expect interest rates to continue to drift higher, but at a softer pace. With all this going on in the global economy, we see a differentiating view from bulls and bears of the stock market. Bulls are focused on depressing real yields, measured pace of monetary policy shifts, strong earnings, company buybacks, and seasonality, while the bear camp points out persistent inflation and policy and rate implications, peak earnings, and valuations. So that's the recap of the stock market so far and the outlook for 2022. At this point, I would like to get into the 401k discussion. This, so this, is, now this is Karen again. This was a great introduction, and Andrew is going to kind of weave this in to the 401k, but feel free. He's an investment officer. And if anyone has any questions, they can ask now. We're going to break again midway and we're going to ask questions at the end. But you have uh, an expert here, so you're welcome to, to ask questions. But if not, then we'll go back to questions again. And thank you, Andrew, and you can move on. No one is asking questions at this point. OK, thank you. So to, to begin the 401k discussion, I just wanted to start out with a few statistics um, about the industry and how the industry has been evolving. The current 401k balance is $123,900. Assets held within 401k plans is at $6.9 trillion. This compromises roughly 20% of the entire retirement market. To illustrate the growth of the 401k industry, just 10 years ago, the total assets held within 401k plans was only $3.1 trillion. An important feature that every plan sponsor should be aware about is the fees that they're paying, not only as administrative fees, but also the fees that they're paying within the investment lineup in their accounts. So on this slide, you will be able to see um, a recent a survey that was conducted by Pew Charitable Research, uh, Pew Tra Charitable Trust. So they surveyed over 1,000 business owners who had 401k plans. And of all those owners, only 19% of small to medium sized business owners were very familiar with the fees that they were actually paying. 34% of those surveyed said they were not familiar at all with the fees that were charged within their plan. And then about 47% of those participants said that they were somewhat familiar. Um, as a lot of you probably are aware, fees have an inverse relationship with performance. The more fees you pay in your account, the bigger drag on your investment performance. As a 401k investment manager, I can determine the exact amount of fees that your plan is being charged, which is especially important when it comes down to what they call hidden fees. Although retirement plans can be complex and confusing, understanding the benefits will vastly outweigh this fear. 401k plans offer tremendous benefits for your employees. For starters, it allows employees to save through retirement through pre-tax contributions, meaning 100% meaning of their elected contributions end up in their account. By doing so, this also lowers the employee's taxable income, which could put them in a lower tax bracket. And since these contrib contributions are made before tax, the investments also grow in the account 
and on a tax deferred basis. Um, so to kind of illustrate this, let's assume a person has a taxable account um, and a 401k account, and both have balances starting with $10,000. Um, let's assume that they each earn, both accounts earn exactly 6% a year in interest, dividends, and capital gains. And let's make the assumption that the taxable account has a tax rate of 25%. So after taxes are paid, what is left is reinvested in the taxable account. And by the end of 20 years, that taxable account will have accumulated $24,117. However, the account that was allowed to compound tax-free will reach a value of $32,071. That's a 33% difference. Another advantage is to supplement Social Security. According to the Social Security Administration, a worker with average earnings expects Social Security to supplement 40% of their income in retirement. However, 70% of pre-retirement income is needed during retirement on average. Investing early and wisely helps to fill this Social Security gap that otherwise can be daunting for many individuals as they enter retirement. Lastly, you can save much more a year in a 401k plan than you can in an IRA. For 2021, the contribution limits in a 401k are $19,500 and then $26,000 um, if you are over the age of 50 because you're allowed a $6,500 catch-up limit. Um, besides that, your employee can also contribute to your plan as well. For 2021, that combined limit between employee and employer goes up to $58,000 in 64,500 if you are over 50 and have the catch up contribution. So these benefits are crucial to helping businesses get jobs filled while retaining top talent within their organization. While the pandemic fueled a labor shortage in the economy, it's more important than ever to keep employees financially healthy as well as financially educated. Intro, we have a question. I think it would be great at this time. Can I still make contributions into my 401k account if I make contributions into my, I'm sorry, can I still make contributions into my IRA account if I make contributions into my 401k account? Okay, yes, to answer that, um, if you are making contributions into a 401k account, you can still make contributions into an IRA account. Um, the only thing is you may not be able to take tax deductions um, on the contributions. Um, however, you can still contribute the maximum. Thank you. And that's the only question so far. I'm sure more will be coming in. All right, I will keep going. So while monitoring a, a plan can be cumbersome, using a 401k investment advisor can help take the stress of managing all aspects of a plan and give you back precious time to focus on your business. While it's important to understand the benefits of a 401k plan, it's equally beneficial to understand the key individual who are responsible for your plan. So we have a slide here which will illustrate the many constituents that are needed to ensure a retirement plan is operating efficiently. Um, you'll have your plan sponsor, which is the company. It's the company and it's usually an executive, uh, an HR personnel or financial officer who has a responsibility within the company um, to make sure everything is operating efficiently. Then you'll have your third party plan administrator, often referred to as a TPA. They are typically responsible being, for being the custodian as well as the record keeper of the assets within the plan. And then lastly, you'll have a 401k investment fiduciary who acts as the investment professional to take on what's called a 338 or 321 capacity to help bland, to help build the uh, investment lineup of the funds offered within. So a lot of people are familiar with an investment manager but less frequently familiar with an investment manager acting as a fiduciary for a retirement plan. A 401k advisor is used to review and consult on current retirement plans or help a company establish a retirement plan that's best suited for their business and their business needs. We're here to advise on compliance issues and work alongside the plan administrator to maximize the record keeping and custodian experience. But most importantly, a 401k advisor selects and monitors the plan investments. 
With over 30 years operating as a fiduciary, First Financial Trust has provided professional investment management services, trust administration, estate planning, and personal financial planning. With the evolving complexity of the 401k space, First Financial Trust is pleased to now offer 401k advisory services as a fiduciary to cater to your company's specific needs. So there are many benefits of adding a 401k investment manager to your plan. One of the best ways um, to help your employees prepare for retirement is to educate them on the importance of self-funded retirement. Um, we've seen our country shift greatly away from the defined benefit plan that was um, typically used to be the norm, which were pension plans and um, similar plans over to the defined contribution plan, which made it more important than ever for individuals to be taking care of their own retirement. While Andrew, Andrew, before you move on, I know I should have addressed it earlier. We did get a question. If you can just spend a few more minutes about what it means to be a fiduciary. Okay, yes, yeah, certainly. Um, so this word, people might hear this word a lot. There's different ways um, investment professionals need to act. Um, so it, under being a fiduciary, it stipulates that advisor must place their interest below that of clients. It consists of duty of loyalty and care. It also means advisors must do their best to make sure investment advice is made using accurate and complete information and that the analysis is thorough as possible. Avoiding conflicts of interest is also a big part of being a fiduciary. Um, and whenever a conflict of interest may arise, it must be reported both to the client as well as um, be kept on record. Thank you very much. Thank you for asking that question. All right. Um, I forget what I was talking about. Um, so you, utilizing an investment manager um, dramatically increases the participation rate of retirement plans um, because when you have an, an investment manager as part of your plan, we come to not only the enrollment meetings, uh, at the enrollment meetings, we'll talk about the importance of starting to invest in, into a 401k as early as possible, um, compounding your growth throughout the years, um, answering any questions that employees may have um, that are unfamiliar or new to um, company retirement plans. So getting questions answered from your employees uh, dramatically increases the participation within the plan. One of the more important benefits of using a 401k advisor is that it reduces the fiduciary responsibility of the company. Not many people have the time, education, or resources to provide the best investments in a plan, and this is where we shine at First Financial Trust. If your plan does not hire a 401k investment manager, then you are fully responsible for the investments offered within the plan. Um, another, another benefit is that it reduces the workload and stress for key level employees. We'll take care of everything on the back end and work directly with your executives and HR department to ensure your plan is ERISA compliant and running optimally. Besides being experts in the investment universe, we understand that no two businesses are the same. Therefore, we believe that each company's retirement plan should be customized to fit your needs. Most plan administrators will take a cookie cutter approach. But as a 401k investment manager, we will walk you through the many options you can utilize to set up your retirement plan. There are many ways to customize it. Um, I won't get into the details of that. If anyone has questions um, later, they can definitely reach out to me and I can talk about the many ways you can set up a plan um, to best fit your business. So as I mentioned before, there are two different capacities. Um, that we can operate as a 401k investment advisor. Um, one capacity is the 321 investment manager and the other one is the 338 investment manager. A 321 fiduciary is an investment advisor and co-fiduciary alongside with the company's fiduciary. They help build the fund lineup, review the investment selection and make recommendations. However, they don't have any decision-making or discretionary authority. This means the company's fiduciaries or the company's sponsor is still liable for the fees and the performance of the investments within the account. 
Um, so a 338 fiduciary is an investment advisor who actually makes the decision about what to include in the plan. They implement it and then manage the investments on an ongoing basis. I often get asked, how do I know which option should I choose for my business? A 321 or a 338? It's, it seems all complex. I don't have time to understand the Department of Labor's ERISA laws and, and understand all of this. So how I typically answer this is it comes down, the most important difference is it comes down to risk and responsibility. You should be asking yourself four questions when you're making this decision. Um, there should be a slide here which will break down these four questions. Um, so the first question would be, do you have time to essentially take on a part-time job? The second one is, do you have someone internally that has a required level of expertise in regards to ERISA requirements or investment management? Um, another question you should ask yourself is, how much fiduciary responsibility do you want to shift off of your company's plate? Although th acting in a 321 capacity will shift some of the responsibility over to the investment manager, it doesn't fully shift away the liability that your company would still have for the fees as well as the performance of the investments. Uh, the last question I, I encourage someone to ask themselves is, do you have someone capable of selecting and monitoring investment options with a high level of aptitude? So to, to kind of expand on that, um, it's important to understand the legal fiduciary responsibility you have for your company's retirement plan. And it's more important than ever. This is because under there's been there's recent changes in the in DOL and ERISA laws constantly. Um, every year you're getting changes under ERISA law. Most recently, um, there was a change in the limited scope audit. Um, and the current practice is for most large plan filers. Um, and it's now being replaced with, with what is called the ERISA section 103A3C audit. Essentially, this means auditors will now be required to focus on high risk compliance issues, um, commonly referred to as prohibited transactions. A common example of a prohibited transaction is um, a late employee contribution to the plan. The official rule um, states employee contributions should be remitted to the plan on the earliest date However, that means it cannot be remitted no later than 15 business days of the month that the, there was a deferral. Um, and just recently, actually a couple months ago, the Department of Labor uh, issued guidance for small plans. So basically plans who have under 100 participants saying uh, remittance, remittance of the funds beyond seven days are late. And plan sponsors will now be required to pr provide written documentation that acknowledges that you are fully responsible for the plan's ERISA compliance under the Department of Labor. And we do understand the ever-shifting retirement landscape under the DOL can be difficult for someone who's running a business to stay on top of, especially for someone who doesn't have um, someone who is knowledgeable or, or enough employees to really take that on as a full-time job. So adding a 401k investment manager ensures that your company's plan is staying compliant with all current regulations. Um, and even almost more importantly, it, it keeps you updated on new changes that could potentially be taking place um, that could have dramatic effects on your business. Next, I wanted to touch a little bit um, on some of the tax benefits of opening or operating a 401k plan. It's something that's commonly overlooked by a lot of business owners. Um, but there are certain tax benefits that you get. Um, for instance, employers can deduct contributions on a company's federal income tax return to the extent the contributions don't exceed cer certain limitations. In addition, a business tax credit is also available for a company just starting a 401k plan. This credit of up to $5,500 each year for the first three plan years can be applied to plan startup expenses. These expenses include administrative cost expenses, uh, investment expenses, as well as other expenses. So our staff at First Financial Trust, we work directly with your company's tax advisor to ensure that you're taking advantage of all the tax benefits that are available. 
Um, we work regularly with tax advisors to make sure our clients are, are taken care of from a holistic standpoint. So before um, I wrap up, I wanted to um, kind of highlight how First Financial Trust takes a unique approach to the 401k industry. So we have five dedicated members uh, with a multitude of experience that make up our investment committee. Our investment committee has a wide range of degrees and certifications from MBAs to CFAs that meet the excellent standard that is required to be a true fiduciary. Having reviewed and analyzed probably over a hundred different target date funds, I've just come to the conclusion I don't like them. Um, to be straightforward, they're often very over expensive, typically underperforming, um, which some cases are just because of the fees within them. Um, and they're quite confusing for the everyday investor. So most target date funds are what you would call a fund of funds. It's basically uh, a bunch of mutual funds wrapped under one layer. So you're getting fees from those and then management fees to manage those target date funds. So they do get quite complex and make it difficult for someone to actually utilize them properly and not cross uh, investments over. So at First Financial Trust, we customized and we put together uh, multiple uh, target models using ETFs. Uh, using ETFs instead of mutual funds is a good way to cut down on the fees within your account just to start. Uh, and these models have a various degree of equity to fixed income exposure. They start at um, a full 100% equity exposure um, and then drag all the way down to a more 65, 70% mix of fixed income and a, a 30%, 25% um, equity exposure. And as I, as I alluded to earlier, during enrollment meetings, um, not only do we work with the business owners and the key employees, we work with all the employees during those meetings. Um, so it's an excellent time for employees to really ask questions of, you know, where, where they should try to gauge where they should be invested. So unlike traditional target dates, date funds, we review these on a quarterly basis and we make adjustments we feel are necessary based on our firm's outlook on the economy and financial markets. In addition, we also provide due diligence research when it comes to selecting the best funds for your company's plan. We take in a lot of things into consideration, including funds, expenses, uh, recent and historic performance, risk, um, risk adjusted performance, uh, different exposure, uh, and, and many other things. We, uh, we also have weekly meetings to discuss the important issues that are currently happening in the global economy. Most importantly, we review fund performance, allocation changes, uh, new funds being offered, fund flows and where they're going um, on a very regular basis rather than an annual basis, um, which most target date funds will do. And then they'll just make changes once a year. Um, but we know that things change a lot quickly than once a year in the markets. Um, so it's important to, to be monitoring those on a more regular basis. So that's how we kind of built our models off of. And that's definitely not the, the industry norm by any means. Um, so that's where we believe we set ourselves ahead of the crowd. Having operated in a fiduciary capacity for over 30 years, we continue to live by a mantra that your best interest is our only interest. So I believe um, there should be a slide. Um, yeah, so this slide here um, illustrates the importance of how fees adversely affect your retirement savings. Um, I'm sorry, just one moment. So as you can see, basically the first bar is the industry target date fund expense ratios. And then and these are um, the average target date fund expense ratios for uh, many of the other big uh, fund companies that offer target date funds. And then on the last bar, you'll see our average target date fund expense ratio. Uh, 
Um, I'm sorry, if you go to the next slide, this is where you can see the biggest difference between the fees um, and the returns. So the assumption here essentially is you're investing 1625 each month. Uh, that number comes out to the max contribution from an employee in the, the 19. Um, and then I assumed a 7% return each year. Um, so as you can see, the fee amount doesn't seem to create that much of a difference. Um, but once you get all the way and you're allowing money to compound on a um, regular basis, look in year 20, where just a small difference of maybe 20, 25 basis points, um, an industry return would get you around $780,000, where cutting down on those fees would get you to a little over an $820,000 balance. And that's that's simply just fees. It has nothing to do with the investment performance because everything's assumed at a 7% rate. Um, so I think that's going to wrap up the discussion um, in regards to the fees. So I just wanted to mention here um, that we do offer a free plan review and analysis. Um, and I'm happy to do it for anyone who has an existing 401k or 403b plan. Um, and there's a couple of documents that are needed for this. Um, the documents are there. It's the fee disclosure and uh, a statement of plan assets. And by utilizing these documents, we can identify what they call red flags. Um, red flags are high administration cost, low participation rate, uh, missed contributions, and, and a multitude of other um, issues, such as like corrective distributions. So when we do this analysis, we can see if any money can be saved under your plan administrator, um, as well as our investment committee will take a deep dive into the investment fund lineup that you currently are using and see if we can make any recommendations that may better suit your retirement goals. Well, we have a number of questions. Are we ready for those now, Andrew? Sure. Okay. Yes. The first one is you talked about fund of funds and a question came in. Do you primarily use a specific fund company for the offerings within a 401k plan? No, we do not. That is um, something you'll you'll see often, especially if you're using a um, larger um, third party administrator um, that has their own proprietary funds. So a lot of those companies will offer all of their funds, of course, because they benefit from doing so. Um, and then maybe a handful of a couple other ones. Um, but at First Financial Trust, we don't sell any proprietary funds. We don't we don't sell any funds. We um, we take a holistic approach. We go we go through thousands of different funds, um, and we just pick the best performing, um, the most cost efficient funds. So we're not tied to any fund family that's going to kind of limit your access to potentially a better uh, investment option. Okay, thank you. Another one, and there was two parts. So I'll put them together. How does educating my company's employees on investing in a 401k plan benefit my business? And then also, you had mentioned that the owner, who may be surprised, they can save money on taxes too. So, how do I educate? How does educating my company's employees on investing help benefit my business? And then how? And then what is the benefit again for the owner from a tax perspective? Okay. Um, so obviously, um, educating your employees will help them out. Um, just simply, I mean, th they'll be set up better for the future. Um, they'll be more knowledgeable. Um, it's essentially a free benefit that they're getting to get a financial education. Um, but besides them benefiting from that, um, Essentially, the 401k laws were constructed to encourage all employees, not just business business owners, to benefit from the plan. Um, so if your plan participation is low, uh, you and any highly compensated employees, like you as the business owner, um, could be limited into the benefits you enjoy. That's a lot of times where if a plan has low participation rate um, and the business owner or any highly compensated employee is making contributions, um, that's where you'll find what is called a corrective distribution. 
even though they're contributing below the maximum threshold because the plan participation is so low from other employees, they have to take that money out of the 401k and it gets put back to them. And then that money is taxed as taxable income now back to them. Thank you. So you can do a 401k with as low as one employee. And, um, and what's a solo for this? It's another term rolling around about a solo plan. So what's the one employee and the no employee plans? Yes, so a traditional 401k plan would have, um, would be for you and your employees. But as you just mentioned, there is another type of plan that is a lot less known called a solo 401k plan. Um, that's for someone who is a business owner and they um, don't have any other employees. Um, so the typical thought is for them to open a SEP IRA. Um, in a SEP IRA and a solo 401k operate very similarly. However, there are some benefits of the solo K, um, which you share with the 401k. Some of these are, you are able to have the Roth option, which means you pay your taxes up front. And then when you take that money out, you're not getting taxed. Um, a Roth option is a good benefit for someone who expects to increase their earnings over the year. So if you're expected to be in a higher tax bracket in retirement than you are currently, the Roth option is the best option for you. Um, another benefit is uh, you can actually take a loan out of a solo K plan, just like you can with a 401k plan. Um, but that option is not available in a SEP IRA. Um, and then the another benefit is um, the maximum contribution amount is greater in a solo K plan than a SEP IRA plan. Um, this is because with a SEP IRA, contributions only come from the employer. When you have a solo K plan, even if you're the only person in the company, your contributions can still come from what would be called an employee contribution as well as an employer contribution. Um, so you're able to contribute a lot more and save a lot more on a tax deferred basis that way. So we know a lot of our businesses are small businesses one employee, two, three, four, five, but those those businesses go on the regular 401k plan. Yes, correct. Um, one one and up, right? One employee and up. Is, yes, as long as the, uh, if it's just you and say a spouse, you can still utilize a 401k plan because of the tax laws um, if, you're, if you're married. Um, but if you have any other type of employees, it would be a, a traditional 401k plan. You also and mentioned, okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say for, for people who have small businesses, um, there are a lot of, you do have a, a lot of unique ways to set up a, a 401k plan that was going to benefit, um, obviously the business owners first and foremost, but you can also um, gauge who is able to invest in that 401k plan as well. Um, so you can make sure that you're not um, basically wasting company assets on um, someone who may just leave in the next month or you, if you have a high turnover with a lot of part-time employees, things of that nature, um, someone who doesn't work that often for you. You mentioned red flags, that you could find red flags from your knowledge and your tools could someone who has a 401k understand the red flags on that 401k? Is that something people should be looking up somehow, or does a professional have to tell them that? Um, possibly maybe a plan sponsor, someone in a company who has dealt with it for many years may be able to identify a couple red flags. Um, one of the easier one would be a corrective distribution um, because they would see that money went into a 401k plan and then at the end of the year the money had to go back out to the business owner or someone another key employee um, and that became taxable income back to them um, from an administrative uh, standpoint the fees um, yeah they can see obviously the fees that the, their tpa is charging them um, but those fees don't include hidden fees um, kind of what i talked about a lot of fund of funds um, and actually the fees within your investments. Um, there are a lot of um, proprietary funds that will also charge what they call a management fee just to manage those target date models. So besides 
the normal expenses within those models. On top of that, you'll also have a management fee charge. Um, and unless you really have the um, certain technology and wherewithal to understand all of those fees, uh, those fees won't show up anywhere. You won't see those um, mentioned by your TPA at all. So people don't know what they don't know. So if if someone were to want some kind of free evaluation, I think you said no obligation. You could be looking at red flags for them and looking at maybe some fee reductions or improving results. And that's something that in your position, you're that, and that's what you're doing. You're helping people get an evaluation. And if it makes sense for them to stay where they are, great. But it sometimes whatever you have, it's a good thing to evaluate what you have. Um, right? Yes, yes, certainly, especially with um, so mo most plans will actually renew uh, at the beginning of a calendar year. Um, so, so it always makes sense to take a look at it. I mean, a lot of people will not really review their plans until it's time to actually, um, you know, renew them in January. Um, but it's a it's a great opportunity for people to to get a second opinion. Um, a lot of times uh, we'll find that just from administrative cost, um, companies are able to lower their their cost by three four thousand dollars a year, um, and that's just for smaller companies. When you get into some of the bigger companies paying larger fees, those can be reduced upwards of ten thousand. Um, I mean that money can help your business a lot, especially smaller businesses uh, to reinvest within your company. Um, to, to attract employees paying higher wages with, with having that extra money on the books. I mean, you can do a lot, a lot more things with that money than uh, just paying a third party administrator to just take it out of your account. So we don't know if some of our guests have 401ks today for their employees or the thinking of starting up at 401k. Is it really daunting to start or it's not that complicated once you get going? I mean, because some people don't have them now, you know, but the benefits of hiring and retaining employees because people say benefits are key when you're interviewing and the 401k is a very smart one. So how hard is it for people to get started? They have the benefits in their view, but how hard is it to get started, Andrew? Yeah, just to touch on that quickly, um, a 401k is definitely a big benefit that a lot of people look for, um, especially as I mentioned earlier that, you know, you don't see pension plans around very often anymore. Someone's not just gonna have a big account for you when you retire it's it, it's up it's really up to you at this point um and especially with the um scarcity of social security and and a lot of people wondering is is that even gonna is there gonna be funds available for me uh, by the time i retire um but but to get back to that um it, it can definitely be daunting for someone who is not really knowledgeable about, about all the interworkings of it um, but that's where using a 401k investment manager um, helps quite a bit because we start from the absolute beginning and we're there every step of the way. Um, so when you're working with a with third party administrator, we're, we're in that meeting with you. We're asking the questions that you may not know how to ask or may not know about. Um, we're making sure that you're, you're getting all the information that you need ahead of time. Um, so having us there, make sure that you do get all your questions answered because it can definitely be daunting um and, and very confusing at the beginning and how long a process is it for a small business getting into this is it a couple of months usually or is it it gets so, there's a lot of variables i'm sure so if a company is looking to just start up a 401k for their business um the startup will typically take about four five typically four to five four to five weeks um to get everything off the ground and that's basically um you know, getting your agreements done, um, then going through the different ways you can set up the plan and figuring out the best structure for your business. Um, and then after that, it's just getting the plan open, which will take a couple more weeks. And after that, you're able to start funding it. Um, but if there's someone who is has an existing uh, 401k plan and they were looking to um, move it over or, or add, um, say, First Financial Trust as their investment manager, that could typically take uh, a little bit longer, uh, roughly about maybe six to eight weeks. And, and that's more just because uh, the timing of assets being transferred over. Um, if a company has a longer time to actually keep assets on the book, they'll do it until a lot of times, at least until basically they have to shift them over. So it could take a couple extra weeks.
So there are no additional questions. And so we'll do our thank yous now. So thank you, Andrew, for this very informative discussion. We hope you've all learned something to help you with retirement plans for your business. Um, and we're going to put up a contact slide now. So uh, there's Andrew's email address, his phone number. And again, if you want to bounce ideas off of him, just validate what you have or learn about starting one up. That's what he's here for. That's his job is he's 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 the 401k guy um and so and you can understand how much he knows um so that ends our program for today and we'll let you know about future programs of on, on this topic or others and again thank you so much for joining us we hope you have a wonderful evening goodbye everyone thank you everyone for joining bye bye <laughs>